Welcome to video three of module two. Remember what we're concerned with here is a practical guide to applying a multi-criteria decision-making framework. And in this video, the focus is going to be the use of the Excel tool that we've developed to help us undertake this analysis. So in this video, as we said, we will take a, a look at the tool, which is based on an Excel spreadsheet that we've developed for New Zealand. It will focus on what features are needed to undertake HP and how they are incorporated into Excel. We should just stress that there's some important concepts that you need to have learned before commencing this video. We've raised them in earlier videos, but really you need to look through the reading to make sure you are confident about these. So the first is really about what are the domains and subdomains and the importance of them being clearly defined which we talked a lot about in module two, video two, but also in module one, video three. What are the weights that are calculated and what do they tell us? And what is the consistency ratio and what does it show us? So if you're confident about the calculation of the weights, the structure, and what we mean by consistency ratios, then it will be uh, much easier for you to follow uh, the discussion around the tool that we have developed. So we will now progress to examine the Excel spreadsheet tool that was developed for the New Zealand study and adapted for Sentinel. Now, I'm happy um, to discuss with people. If you were interested in using this tool, um, please do feel free to contact me. But I should note that there are a range of software that are available for free or for purchase that can be used for AHP and other multi-criteria decision-making techniques, and these may suit your needs. So A Thousand Minds is an example of commercial software, and uh, we've put a link in the slide to that. Or an example of freely available software can be found at Business Management Performance Singapore website, and we've put a link to this. So if you're kind of interested and want to explore those more, um, feel free to look. This isn't a, a ringing endorsement, of um, those uh, other, other software, but I, I think it's important you're aware that other things are out there for you to look at. So we will now move on to consider our spreadsheet. So this is our, our spreadsheet uh, that we have um, built uh, for our work in, in New Zealand. And I'll just sort of talk a little bit about, uh, introduce it, and then we will go through how we use it in a practical sense when we're using it. So within our spreadsheet, we have obviously a number of sheets, which we will talk about as we go through. So here we have an introductory sheet, then one where we discuss the domains, and then where we work our way through the six subdomains. Um, there's a final spreadsheet, which produces the final figure for this, uh, for, for based on the analysis that's been undertaken. And then there's one that helps us with considering the consistency that we've developed. So what we do in this first uh, sheet here is really what we call the introduction one, which sort of highlights uh, the context within which this has been used. So as we said, this is what we set up for New Zealand. So this page here has information that relates to what are the domains that we're considering here and the subdomains. So we've got our financial, environment, market, regulation, social, and knowledge base. And here we can insert the domains that we are interested in, and this will then feed in to the rest of our sheet. So if you've changed these domains, you can change this and, and put it in here. So we, here we have our six domains, and this now populates uh, the sheets that we are looking at. So it is the first stage of it. It's, it's setting up the structuring, what are our financial, you know, what are our domains, what are our subdomains, and we can put these uh, into our analysis. So let's think a bit about what it looks like when you begin to actually use the spreadsheet. Uh, as I said, it's very much based in um, Excel. And what we've tried to design is a, a graphical interface that allows us 
to do the AHP, the pairwise comparison uh, across it. So we've set it up this way. And so in theory, you can begin uh, when you've discussed and introduced it to, this, uh, to your uh, respondent, to your interviewee, they can then in a sense begin to the process. One thing I should perhaps emphasize is that actually it's very useful if you've got these sort of domain document would be to print this out and give it to the respondents so they've got it while they're thinking about the process because this will remind them what they're meant to be considering when they're thinking about the financial domain or the environmental domain. So how does this spreadsheet work then? So when they first look at it, what you fundamentally see are the, the pairwise comparison diagram in here and an indication of what the numbers mean. And, you know, based on the reading, you understand that if you stay at one, then you view them as equally important. And as you move to three, five, seven, nine, then the importance, the dominance of that factor over the other factor um, becomes you know, more intense. And so really, if they move to the left here, like this example, then we're saying financial performance dominates uh, market factors. If they move to the right here, they're indicating that market factors dominate financial performance. And as we said, the further you go, the more stronger that domination is. And so if you get up to nine, then it's given extreme importance to financial over market factors here. Yeah. So the process works really, uh, that you, you um, discuss with them. And as you're talking to them, you say, well, the relative importance of the two, and they talk to you and they begin to move the uh, sliders here as we go through. So in this case, we're saying, for example, financial performance has strong, so financial performance has strong importance relative to market factors. Here we may say that we think it's uh, moderately more important than social. We might find it as strong importance against um, environment. We might find it as only, you know, sort of, so I could argue that perhaps they're making it equal importance with the knowledge base and that it's a uh, very strong importance over regulation. So through this process of making these pairwise comparisons, we, could, we can go through for this. So we talk to them and we say relative. So then we move on and say, well, what about market factors relative to social well-being? What about market factors relative to the environment? And you go through and once they get the hang of the process, it can be relatively smooth. And the key thing is, you know, to get them to discuss whilst they're talking about it and to make sure sometimes you might need to um, help them think, of, you know, think about again, what is in social well-being? What do we mean by social well-being? Those sorts of factors here. And they carry on with the process. And obviously I'm doing it very quickly here just to show uh, what actually happens as you go through. I haven't really thought about the relationship between these, but hopefully what you're supposed to be going to talk about later, hopefully they've been relatively consistent in their choices as they go through. I think I've been very inconsistent here because I've put everything on to the left-hand side. This might cause me trouble in a moment. But again, just that process of going through. So now once they finish that, the question is, okay, so what, what does that mean? We're able to now actually use that um, through the eigenvalue, the calculations that underlie the spreadsheet to basically work out the weight that is given to the different aspects. Um, I might just change these around a bit to be a bit more consistent and give us a bit more interest in what's going on. Okay. And if we go here, we can now see the weights that have been generated as a result of the process. So what we tend to do when we do this is once they've been through it, we show them that these are the weights that they're given. And remember, we think about the weight as summing to one, and we think about one as the totality of the factors of influencing their decision. So the, the greater the proportion of that one that is taken up by one of the domains, then the more important it is. 
And the way that we'll just bring through it very quickly there highlights, for example, that knowledge base here takes up about 31, you know, 0.31 of that and is and linked closely to financial. So these two have come out on that basis as being you know, of most importance and regulation of much less importance. Now the figures are interesting, but what is useful about this and the graphical representation is that you can put it back to the person you're speaking to and say, well, does this kind of fit generally with your perception, your feelings about it? You know, Generally, are you, are you surprised or not surprised that financial knowledge have come out so highly? And then that gives you just a discussion. And if they are, you know, if there's some things here saying, well, that doesn't look right to me and stuff, then you can go back and begin to think about where some of these comparisons have gone, that maybe they've actually you know, overweighted something or, or whatever. So it just helps that process. Because really what we're trying to do is capture, you know, on paper, what's implicitly going on in their mind. And so you want them to be comfortable that these weights sort of reflect the kind of importance that they give to the different areas. Now, we've talked a lot about um, consistency. And so I have included in our uh, um, spreadsheet, the tool, a, a check here for consistency. So we can, after doing the analysis, we can click that to see how consistent they are. And remember from the analysis, Sarte, uh, Sarte's consistency ratio ranges from zero if they're perfectly consistent up to one if they're completely random effectively. And you're trying to get around about 0.1. You know, 0.1 is a good, or below highlights a good level of consistency. Now, you know, I, I did this quite randomly, so it's probably not surprising that um, the consistency ratio is a higher than um, 0.1, it's round about 0.25. Now, consistency is an interesting issue. Um, I've set it up here so that you can go back and see where changes could be made that could um, sort of increase the consistency. But I think you have to be careful about this because really what you're trying to capture is what they feel. Simply moving these around to reduce uh, inconsistency, I'm not sure is necessarily the right idea, but it could be worth having a discussion about some of these areas to feel that are they really you know, satisfied and happy with, with this. So we've got consistency ratios in this, um, they do give us an indication of, you know, how consistent they've been, but I do think you need to be careful about how you use it. Because to me, the main thing is really what we're trying to get to is there, you know, are they happy with the sorts of weights that have been developed from this? Does it make sense to them that financial performance is roughly about 30% of the whole knowledge base also 30%, because really that's what you're trying to get at. Yes, there's a statistical process underlying this and it is important, but at the end of the day, what you're trying to get at is an understanding of what's important to them in the decision-making process. So this kind of get, highlights you know, quite closely how, how it works. And this is at the overall domain level and we get then the weights at the overall domain level. Then what we say basically is we go through the process to say, well, this highlights the financial performance relatively 0.3 or knowledge base is 0.3, but then we can proceed then to think about, about what within financial performance, how would you begin to trade off these particular aspects? How does the capital investment here look like towards profit? or capital to return on investment, payback period. So we won't need to go too long going through this because it's the same fundamental process as before, but now you're working back within the subdomain level. So again, you would then get them to work their way through, highlighting the relative importance, say, of capital investment to other factors. And then we can go through and look at this. So again, On this uh, sheet, I haven't changed it. So the consistency ratios come up uh, straight away, but we don't need to worry about those 
too much at the moment to say we go through. And here we have the results for the subdomain. So again, the same process can be used. You can show this figure back to your uh, interviewee and or interviewees or group, whoever it is you're working with. And then you can begin to say, does this seem uh, feasible for you? So again, in this case here, we have capital investment being shown as having the greatest weight. Is that what sort of sits comfortably with them? And so again, you know, they can go through this process uh, and look at these particular aspects. You can have a graphical uh, interface, which helps them think about when they're um, moving this. So it get a nice feel for the relative what's going on, but also the graphical interface in a sense, in terms of what weights have been generated. Because I think these are useful for helping them picture what's happening in the process. And then for each of the subdomains, we have the same process. Now, it does seem quite a lot of work as we go through this, um, but the key issue here, I think, is that as long as you can keep the conversation going, as long as you set it up right, as long as they kind of, it keeps them engaged, and actually, as they go through, they get more used to the process of making these sort of trade-off decisions. Remember, it's probably better that you, re if, as long as they're willing and you ask them, that you record the conversation because you get lots of really great insights as they're discussing. You know, in this case, it might be why they're comparing similarity to the current system to the exempt system is proven, and this really gives you some richness in the analysis as we go through. So we can, um, as we say, we can use the tool this way. We can work through, it calculates uh, the weights, it calculates the consistency ratios uh, for us. Um, if we click on the consistency diagram here, it shows the relative consistency across the various. Um, so that's the overall domain, that's within financial, market, environment, et cetera. Now, these ones are completely consistent at the moment because I haven't changed them, so they're all at zero. But you can see where we've been playing around some of these consistency levels change. So this gives you an overview of consistency. The diagram, again, we've only played with a few of them, but the final spider produces some of those uh, figures that we've looked at before, um, and in this case, Again, it's slightly skewed because we haven't really looked in these areas, but we can see the relative importance. And again, you know, again, once you've finished and been through this, you can show this to uh, your interviewee and again, discuss it and see whether it makes um, particular sense to them. So this is sort of the process of it um, and collecting from, you know, you can be doing working with a group or an individual as you work through this process. Uh, and again, you know, the, the, the domain, subdomains you choose here, obviously are from the earlier work when we talked about setting up the domains. Uh, we've talked a bit about, you know, how we calculate uh, consistency ratios, what they are and how we interpret them. And then also you know, how we sort of get to the weights through this process of pairwise comparison. So I just wanted to highlight, you know, there is a tool here. Um, it's what we use, it's the way that we undertook it. But as I said earlier, there are other tools available. It's, you know, it's not a unique um, tool. AHP has been widely used and there's lots of things available to do it. But we've just sort of highlighted, you know, what, what do you want to see from a tool? Well, I think obviously you need to be able to calculate the weights. I think we feel that the graphical interface is pretty helpful because it allows them to visualize what's happening when you're having these discussions. You want to think about consistency and consistency ratios, because as we said, consistency gives you an insight into how well they're able to use the tool, how well you've set it up. But again, I will emphasize it's not the be all and end all. Again, it really depends on what your objective is. If you end up out, with, out of this with a, a set of weights that the interviewee feels reflects what they are feeling. So you're kind of putting out there on <laughs> diagrams 
um, something that's implicit to them, if they're kind of satisfied with that and feel that highlights the importance that they give to the various domains and subdomains, then I would say it's been uh, a success. And so again, you know, within this, we've just um, basically highlighted quickly the tool that we used in here. So in, that was a kind of a brief overview of the tool. As I said, uh, I'm happy to discuss, uh, if you would like access to the tool, um, please just email me and we can discuss, but also there are other options uh, available to you. The, um, I guess the, the, in the next video, what we'll move on to is thinking, well, who will you use this tool with? So. First of all, think about the stakeholders and, and others, the who are you going to interview, who's important to your uh, study, but also then how do you use this tool to provide feedback to those that have taken part in it? And how can you do that in a meaningful way that helps them make decisions there? So again, development of this tool was funded through the Our Land and Water National Science Challenge project um, in, in New Zealand. And there are some um, reading materials associated with the development of the tool as well, and they will be good for you to, to look at. And as we said, the next video will be looking at how we work with the stakeholders and provide feedback.